Okay guys, so I'm back here with another painting tutorial. This is uh, gonna be quite striking. We're using a lot of red today, bright crimson red, uh, scarlet red, uh, perhaps a few of my luminous neon colors. I'll list everything, of course, below in the description of this video. Uh, and I'll go over the colors I'm using as I'm using them throughout this video. Today, I've got an older canvas that I primed with black paint, and this is an 18 by 24 canvas. So here we have our scarlet red and crimson red. One's warmer, the scarlet's warmer, and the crimson is on the cooler side, it's more of a blue red. We've also got phthalo blue, a little bit of turquoise, green gold, and white. So to start this painting, we're gonna be working on the background first, and I'm using a large stipple brush, so just use any stipple brush that you have. And I'm gonna take my phthalo blue, with just a little bit of green gold. So we get a really beautiful, beautiful color going on there. And we're simply just going to start tapping in. You can't really see that because it's quite dark. So let's just take a little bit of white, just a hint of white in there. And we'll start that again. So we've just got a big mass of trees, mountainside, behind. We can even just kind of swirl our brush around to make it look like some of these areas are a little bit blurrier. I'm going to go down here with all this color in my brush. For the water. And then just start blending softly around in the background. I'm going to switch over to another brush now. I've got a large filbert. This is a number 50. And I'm gonna take these colors again, a bit more of that green gold this time. I'm gonna tap in some bushes down low and then pull and drag. I'm gonna use a little bit of water to do this. I'm gonna create that reflection. So just pull straight down and then across. We'll have some darker areas so I'm going to use a little bit more blue. Even if it's got a little hint of white in there it's still going to look really pretty. We'll have all sorts of reflections going on. Take a bit of white with our green gold. some bushes up in here so we can use this brush to tap in some little bushes too so just green gold with a little bit of white a little push and tap gentle little pushes and taps in here in and around we don't want to have too too much we want to leave some areas for some really dark shadows. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of a tap, sort of reverse. See how I turn my brush over so we get that shape, but in reverse, mirrored. And a little bit in here. I'm 
I'll we'll sneak a little bit right in here too. Add a little bit of excitement over here. This is a three inch round chalk paintbrush. And I'm gonna pick up white with more blue this time. A little bit more. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Gorgeous colors. I'm just, when you're excited while you're painting, you know you're in a good, good place. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white. I'm just gonna start overlapping. A little bit up here. And let's not forget about down here. And pick up more blue this time. Get some deep, rich blues going on in the water. Just gonna softly scumble dry brush around here. Use a little bit of black. And I've got a flat brush I'm using. Just need to get a nice straight line here. So wherever we have this reflection, we want to cut across. And then just start tapping in a little bit here. There's some shadows. And below, get a little bit of water on my brush. Tap, pull and flick. Okay, I'm gonna take one of my oval mop brushes. If you don't have an oval, you can use a round mop. If you don't have that, you can use a filbert or you can also use a, a fan brush. So just be creative, use whatever you have, guys. And I'm gonna go into my green gold again with a little bit of white. Tap lightly. start tapping in some more bushes here go right down to the water's edge I'm gonna soften this because this is going to be kind of back there so I want to have this look a little bit blurrier a little bit in here too you can just soften it with your finger and then I'm going to add a little bit more in the water again turning my brush the other way so this way up here you get the rounded to get the mirrored effect you're going to turn your brush the other way like this a little bit of water on my brush blur that up a little bit and then pull across. And then here, 
we just have a little bit, it's a little bit darker here. Add a little bit here as well. Just that green, gold, and white overlapping in some areas. Okay, so just drying my brush off slightly. I'm going to take my white with some of my scarlet red. Now I need some white in there as a base so that when it dries, it holds the color if that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna have some back here. Okay, I'm gonna definitely need some more white. It might look a little bit pink at first. Once it dries, I can add my red over top again. So these are maple trees, beautiful, beautiful maple trees. See, we want to leave some spaces between here, in between. And then we want to have some areas that are a little bit thicker. Come in on the side. Right down to here. And we'll have the branches start to kind of curve down right to the water's edge. And we're going to add some, oh, let's start adding some right in here. We'll have a few little few little maple trees climbing up the other side over there. Now we've got to reflect this in the water. So kind of eyeball this. Something like that. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush, make some of these drippy them up. Blur them up a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to come in with a cat's tongue brush now. It's just when I, the first one I grab it. You can use any uh, liner brush, any brush that you feel comfortable with. Take some black and we're going to pull a tree trunk the left side and then into a branch that kind of goes up. It's all wiggly like that. I'm 
and let's add a few little branches that come in here. So add black over that again. And anywhere else that you feel like you might want to have some branches. I mean, those are further in the distance, so you don't need to worry too much about them. It's kind of nice to have a few little branches here and there. We're going to begin our bridge. And first I'm going to do it in a little bit of white with a red. And we're going to go up and over. And don't worry about going over your trees. Because we're going to put some more foliage over top and cover those edges up. So we'll do an arch like that. And then we're going to do place two big posts like that. Leave a space and do a reflection in the water. I'm going to take a little bit of black and I'm going to not quite halfway through but to about there. One end of the bridge back and then above. I have some black underneath on either side. And then I'm going to do a bunch of lines for the railing. And then another line over top. Okay, we're just going to leave that for now and come back to that. But I want to begin the roof on this little house over here. I'm going to do a little top like that, just a little line. Go up, so it scoops like that, push a little bit harder to make the width thicker with the brush. And it almost looks like the Eiffel Tower on the top. I'm just using some turquoise. Just do a really skinny triangle with some little dabs like that. I'll take some black and my blue. outline very carefully here. Add some little dabs. And 
right over. And then right here, we're going to come in and scoop down. Let's try that again with a little bit more black this time. the way over another scoop and we're gonna have a couple windows we'll have one here just a little square another square here and there I'm going to come I'm going to take a little bit of this off because I brought it down a little bit too low. While I have this brush, I'm going to take a little bit of my turquoise and white. Just pull across here. Tap, tap, tap. Just for a little bit of a grid on the windows, maybe. We're going to have some stairs that come down. Take a little bit of white to a line right there. And then just turn our brush both ways to do little dabs of white. And then on top of each step, we'll add a little bit more white. Now some of this we're going to be going over with red, but it really helps to have this bit of white base. I'm just going to outline this window in black. Add a few little dabs. Well, the sticks are like stone, brick or stone, some kind of stone. I just have a dark area right there. And go up 
it inside here to make this nice and bright. bring that part up a little bit higher. And then there's a few little ropes that come down like that and I'll just go over that again with some white start to block in with a little bit more white now Then I'm going to come in here while I've got white. This brightness. Kind of just tap with that white. Pick up some red. This is where we've got our Reflection here of red from the pose. We're also going to have the bridge, the rest of the bridge, just a little bit. I'm going to add a little post here along the bridge with the red. go below again. And then do a little highlight across the top again. Just a little bit of that red. I'm going to come inside and just take a little bit of this off. So I'm going to come in here and add some, I think I need some green back in here first before I begin doing my railing. I want the railing to be a little bit more see-through. So just more of my green gold. And then where we have our stairs. I'll begin to tuck those stairs in there by adding some little bushes here again in front.
a little bit of white first. So we've got our red first, then a little bit of black, and then a little bit of white. For the area that we walk on. And then we're gonna have a railing up here. Oh, I like how it picked up a little bit of that green gold in there too. I'm going to go into my red now. I'm going to do another line right underneath. I guess not right underneath. I'm leaving a little bit of a space there. And then we're going to do a little red line right above the white. Okay, now we're going to do posts for the railing. Just space them up evenly. I'm going to go into my black and my blue. I'm just going to outline this from underneath. Take away the edges, make them just sort of disappear. Then we'll do a little Skinny, skinny, skinny line right there. You can come right underneath the top railing and then along one side of each of those posts. I'm in here with just a little bit of blue. And it adds some more shadow. My crimson red right here. And I'm going to add a line. So this is going to have beautiful red trim. So you just want to trim out all the windows and then I'm going to come right out here and do a little 
breathing. There's a bit of red that just goes right across there. And it carries around the house. And you can alternate your reds too if you want. I'm alternating between my crimson and my scarlet, adding a little bit of both. Now I'm going to come underneath some red right under here. And then actually put a little bit of blue inside this. It's like a little triangle or diamond shape, I mean. It's kind of right there, and there's a little something right here, too. some red right in back here. With a little bit of blue, I'm just going to come in between and over the top. Add a few lines in here. A little bit of blue back here. And let's go right inside this again. Make this peak really dark. And I'm just using blue because I really like the combination of the blue with the red. But if you want to use black, you can. And then even a little bit of turquoise. Looks really pretty. Just from some little accents. Then I'll cut right back in here with a blue, just outline.
a little bit of white on the end of my brush. Oops, kind of lost it. There we go. So I like how this is looking, but I want to bring the color out a little bit more and add some more white to the roof. So I'm going to add some more highlights now. Just a little hint of that white back in there again. With a silver brush and a little bit of the green gold. I'm going to re-highlight the top of some of these. Now for the pop of color on the trees to make them really look bright, I'm going to take a combination of neon red and neon orange. I might use a little bit of my neon yellow warm. And my fan brush I'm using is a number eight. I'm not going to get it wet. I'm going to take a mixture of both the neon orange and the neon red. I've got quite a bit here. We're going to come right down with it. So see what a difference that makes? Makes a really big difference. It sets off those other reds that we have in there or underneath. Add a little bit there. What a beautiful place to be in the fall this would be. I'm going to add some down here as well. Now to change up some of the, this tree in particular, I want it to be more of a bluey red, neon red, so I'm adding a little bit of neon pink. And you'll see what I mean, you'll see how it just changes the tone up. Now this pink I'm adding over the blue, I'm going to gently blend in, smear that out with my finger. So you see we're already getting a purpley mauve color. Once that dries, it's going to be really pretty. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. A little bit of that pink. 
and I'll use a brush this time rather than my finger. Sometimes I get really messy when I paint. I add a little bit, a little bit of it down below as well. So I'm going to go in without washing my brush off, go right into that neon yellow warm. It's like a really light apricot peach. It's so pretty. And I'm going to add a little bit of it right up in here. Tap it, blend it around a little bit. And add just a hint of it over here. And then I want a little bit here as well. And then reflect it in the water. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is add a few little lights. I've got a little round brush. I'm going to take my luminous yellow. Just mix it around here. Twist and roll my brush, and I'm going to add a little dab here, here, and then a whole bunch in a row. And I'll finish this painting off with this little highlight here on the railing again that we kind of lost. And right back to our shadow color in between the red and the white. This can be the most challenging part to do. Having to get that little area there and getting it even. I find it easier to use a bit of a bigger brush. I'll just come and sweep, clean up the edges. I'm going to take the neon red and orange and just add a little pop of color.
da 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 da. Highlight here, and a couple little lines. And I've got this even tail uh, filbert brush here. It has little lines through it. I don't know if you guys can see. Maybe you can see like that. So I'm getting it really wet. And I'm just going to take some of my highlight color with a bit of turquoise. So this light peachy color. And I'm just going to create some little lines here. It's so far away, I don't really know what's going on here, but I know it just needs a little, a little something else. And the final thing I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of neon yellow cool here that's left. I've got a large filbert brush. You can use any uh, round mop brush, anything to create your foliage, foliage with and stipple. A little bit of white, neon yellow. And I'm just... I'm going to start tapping really gently over that one edge, tuck that bridge in there, and then soften with my finger. Okay, so I'm going to call this one all done, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this and want to paint along with me. Feel free to share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out Patreon for more links, videos, advice, and giveaways. Bye!